Thank you, Dr. Vasquez. Uh, I am pleased and glad to recognize Dr. Uh, Rolando Montoya, our provost of Miami Day College, who I was very aware he has a very heavy schedule today and made his best to escape a few minutes to share with us. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I would now call uh, my distinguished friend and colleague, Jorge Duani, Dr. Jorge Duani, is the director of the Cuban Research Institute at Florida International University, and he would make his best to make a brief introduction of a very long academic story of success of uh, Dr. Mesalago. Jorge, please. Thank you very much, Juan Antonio. And you're actually absolutely right. It's impossible to summarize the academic trajectory of more than five decades of Carmelo Mesalago, but I will do my best to do that. It's a great pleasure to um, uh, comment on Carmelo Mesalago's uh, contributions to the field of Cuban and also Cuban American studies, because he's undoubtedly one of the pioneers, one of the founders of this field uh, several decades ago. Uh, it used to be called Cubanology by some of his leftist critics. Uh, Cubanology, uh, uh, or Cuban studies, more simply, centers on the academic analysis of Cuba and its diaspora before and after the revolution from various disciplinary, theoretical, and methodological perspectives. And I'm actually quoting Dr. Mesalago, who provides this definition in one of his essays. But it's a great challenge to uh, discuss his monumental bibliography because it spans five decades, as I already mentioned. It includes 30 books, hundreds of journal articles and book chapters, published in seven, seven languages and scores of countries, including Cuba. Still, I would like to venture to take stock of some of his most outstanding achievements uh, in order to pay homage to his intellectual legacy and also to introduce you to today's book, Cuba in the Era of, of, of Raul Castro. Carmelo Mesalago has rightfully been called the Dean of Cuban Studies by many people. He has dedicated most of his 56 years of academic life to the study of the post-revolutionary Cuban economy and society. Originally trained as a lawyer, uh, specializing in social security pensions, he left Cuba for Spain in 1961 and worked between 1962 and 1965 with the Grupo Cubano de Investigaciones Económicas, the Cuban Economic Research Project at the University of Miami, which was the first academic program uh, in the United States focusing on Cuba. After completing his master's thesis about work and social distribution in Cuba, he went on to earn his PhD in economics at Cornell with a dissertation on the employment of the labor force in Cuba and several other socialist countries. In 1967, Mesalago obtained a teaching position at the University of Pittsburgh, where he began to establish what was then the best academic program in Cuban studies in the United States. In 1968, along with his late Maria Cristina Herrera, he helped found the Instituto de Estudios Cubanos, the Institute of Cuban Studies in Miami, which promoted academic exchange and still promotes academic exchange with Cuba. A year later, he published what became a seminal article on Cuban socioeconomic statistics in the prestigious Latin American Research Review. A fellow colleague and Cubanologist, Jorge Dominguez, has jokingly called this a particularly boring article, uh, which henceforth ensured the professional credibility of Cuban studies. At Pittsburgh, uh, Mesalago went on to organize a series of conferences and symposia about Cuba, which resulted in the publication of three edited volumes, including what I think is still the classic revolutionary change in Cuba. That was the first interdisciplinary academic assessment of the Cuban Revolution. And in this volume, I'm, quote, I'm, I'm going to quote a couple of passages from the volume because I think it's still very, very much his research agenda, as you will see in this presentation. Um, Mesalago aimed, and I quote, to present a comprehensive, well-documented, up-to-date, and relatively objective study of the revolutionary changes that have taken place in Cuba after 1959. He also attempted to move beyond what he called the Manichaean vision of the Cuban Revolution as either, and I quote, rabid praise or outrageous criticism. Instead, he said, um, he sought to balance the contributions ideologically, combining both sides, but mainly in recruiting scholars who would play down subjective coloration and search for truth, end of quote. As Mesalago writes now, several decades later, he has consistently assumed an equidistant and objective position toward the accomplishments and shortcomings of the Cuban Revolution. I think this is uh, one of his major achievements throughout his entire career. 
Mesarago later published landmark studies, including Cuba in the 1970s, The Economy of Socialist Cuba, in which he developed a very useful periodization to understand the numerous changes in the philosophy and policies of the Cuban government under Fidel Castro and now under Raul Castro. And I think what he does in this book, as you'll see, is to update and to document further uh, the several cycles in, uh, in Cuban economic and political policies over the last five decades. Uh, Mesalago at the time in the 1970s was one of the first ones to emphasize the growing Soviet influence in, the Cuban, in Cuban politics, economy, and society during that decade, a topic that was controversial then, but I think uh, over time, <clears throat> the post-Soviet collapse of the Cuban economy certainly corroborated Mesalago's thesis. Another recurring theme of Mesalago's research agenda has been the comparative analysis of Cuba, particularly Cuba's social security system with that of other countries, a subject on which he has written extensively, most recently in World Crisis Effects on Social Security in Latin America and the Caribbean, <coughs> one book published in 2010, and another book published in 2008 uh, called Reassembling Social Security. I think this comparative international dimension has been a major contribution of, of Carmelo Mesalago's work, given the provincial and insular character of much of Cuban studies. Furthermore, since the late 1960s, he's, uh, he has also produced a very trenchant criticism of Cuba's statistical sources of information, which make it very difficult to assess the performance of key economic variables, such as the country's balance of payments and the gross domestic product. Mesalago, in addition, has published uh, extensively in Spanish as well as in English, including several books like Breve Historia Económica de la Cuba Socialista and Economía y Bienestar Social en Cuba a Comienzos del Siglo XXI, in, and also the book that we're going to uh, hear about today. Mesalago has noted in a recent interview in the Catholic Cuban journal Espacio Laical that he has made a concerted effort to make his work available to a Spanish-speaking audience, particularly in Cuba. And I think over time he has emphasized that his ultimate goal has always been to contribute to prosperity, democracy, and social justice in his homeland. A motive in Mesalago's work has been the use of various sources of, of information published in Cuba and abroad, both by economists and other social scientists espousing different ideologies uh, and perspectives, as you will see today. Indeed, I think one of his most enduring contributions to the field of Cuban studies has been this broad-ranging and ecumenical approach in searching for the best available data, especially of a quantitative nature. Although many of his claims have proven polemical and have often been criticized by both the extreme left and right, his policy of adopting what he calls a calculated detachment vis-a-vis -vis post-revolutionary Cuba has helped to elevate the civilized tone of academic debates about the island. In addition to pursuing his own research agenda on the Cuban economy, Mesalago has been an indefatigable academic entrepreneur and institution builder. In 1970, he founded and edited for nearly 20 years the Cuban Studies newsletter, which later became <laughs> Cuban Studies, Estudios Cubanos, and eventually Cuban Studies, which is still, I think, the most important academic journal on Cuba and its diaspora. I'd like to publicly acknowledge uh, Carmelo's editorial support <clears throat> when he decided to publish my first academic essay in Cuban studies in 1982. I don't think I'd be standing here today speaking to you had it not been for that encouragement uh, while I was still a graduate student. Between 1977, and I'm about to finish now, and 1986, <clears throat> Ms. Alago directed the prestigious Center for Latin American Studies at the University of Pittsburgh. With the financial support of several private in institutions and foundations, he helped to organize and promote a cottage industry in Cuban studies, including the World Regard Cuba series by the University of Pittsburgh, numerous academic events on Cuba, and the first Cuban film festival in the United States. In 1980, he became the first president of Latin American background of the Latin American Studies Association, LASA, where he continued to promote its scholarly exchanges with Cuba. Even though he officially retired from Pitt in 1999, he has published more books and articles, as he had told me, than he was a full professor there, and has continued to teach, do research, and lecture at universities worldwide. He remains active in several professor associations, just as LASA and the Association for the Study of the Cuban Economy, ASCII. He collaborates with Cuban economists on the island as well as abroad. He interacts with institutional representatives of Cuba's Catholic Church, particularly the editors of Espacio Laical and Palabra Nueva, two very important uh, journals on the island. And he's engaged with several efforts to foster cooperation and reconciliation between Cubans at home and in the diaspora. His passionate commitment to Cuban studies, intellectual honesty, honesty, methodological rigor, openness to new ideas and experiences, and generosity toward younger colleagues have set high standards for us all. 
Thank you, Carmelo, for serving as an inspiring role model for several generations of Cuban and Cuban-American scholars.